Atlantic right whales that come to feed off the East Coast from June until September. In recent years, 21 whales have been killed here, hit by ships or entangled in fishing gear. CTV's Todd Battis reports. A rare sight and rare bit of good news for the North Atlantic right whale. Three calves spotted off Florida earlier this month, bringing the number of newborns this year to 10. Still, with little more than 400 individuals and just 100 breeding females, their future remains in doubt. Today, new federal rules were announced to protect the endangered species while in Canada. That could include a freeze on fishing. If a single whale is detected by aerial monitoring or underwater acoustics, a protective area around it of approximately 2,000 square kilometers, or about the size of Ottawa, will be closed off. Some ropeless fishing gear will be tested in an effort to keep whales from entanglement, a major cause of death. The other culprit, ship strikes, is being tackled by speed limits in East Coast shipping lanes. In particular, the busy Gulf of St. Lawrence and around Anticosti Island. In these zones, all vessels longer than 13 meters will be required to travel at a maximum speed of 10 knots at all times. In the past three years, 21 right whales were found dead in Canadian waters. We do need to recognize that if we don't take a really serious action here, we may see the extinction of this animal. Atlantic fishermen are largely on board with the new measures, knowing that failing to protect the whales could result in a ban by the U.S. on Canadian seafood imports, a market too important to risk losing. Todd Battis, CTV News, Halifax. The hereditary injured North Atlantic right whale were announced today in Ottawa. Federal officials say the changes were made to deal with the fact movement of these whales in Canadian waters have become difficult to predict. Fisheries Minister Bernadette Jordan says the new rules are meant to reduce the main causes of the decline in population, of course, that being ship strikes and entanglements with fishing gear. Now, there are about 400 North Atlantic right whales left with about 100 breeding females. To find out more about the new rules, we're joined this evening from our Ottawa studio by Bernadette Jordan. Thank you for joining us, Minister. Thanks for having me. Uh, first of all, tell us about these latest moves by your government. So the, the measures that we're putting in place now are, um, in addition to other members that we've had over the last three years, these are measures that keep evolving um, in cooperation with industry, with fishers, with stakeholder groups, um, with NGOs, because we want to make sure that the measures we put in place are right. The biggest change that we're making this time is uh, we used to have a static zone, which meant that we would predict where whales may be and then close that whole area to fisheries. And that's not what's happening now. What we're doing now is we're going to monitor whale, where the whales are and close the area around the whales as they travel. So it's, it's not one big area that we're closing off. We're closing off um, areas where the whales are known to be. We're using um, a, a, a air surveillance as well as acoustics so that we'll be able to track them better. And that's one of the major, uh, the major changes that we're making. And the other one, of course, is gear marking. And we've heard a lot about this over the last little while, but we need to know when a whale becomes entangled, where the gear is from. Is it from U.S. waters? Is it Canadian waters? Uh, this is a, a way for us to better monitor where the whales are traveling from um, and to make sure that we're, we're developing policy and fisheries management around those, uh, around those measures. In terms of spotting those whales for those areas, as you mentioned, that uh, could be closed, who is going to be responsible for, for detecting them? Will that be something that fishermen will have to take on as well? Well, fishermen will report if they actually see if they see whales, um, but we also have transport um, doing some of the surveillance. We'll be doing some of the surveillance through DFO, uh, but we, we we rely heavily on the people that are in the area making sure that they report if they have a sighting of a whale. Uh, once an area is closed, fishermen must remove all their fish fishing gear, such as lobster and crown traps. What's the penalty if they don't do that? Uh, I actually, I, I'm not really sure of the, what the actual penalties are at this point. We know that we've had extremely great buy-in from the fishers to make sure that we do this because they know how important it is to uh, protect this, these whales. There's only 400 of them left, as you said, mm -hmm. um, and they know that it's, it's something that has to be done. We're going to continue to work with them in order to make sure that we have the best measures going forward. Okay, the Americans, they've expressed concerns Canada hasn't done enough to protect these animals. Will these new rules go far enough to persuade U.S. officials that we're taking this problem seriously? 
I'm very confident that these measures are strong enough to stand up to the U.S. scrutiny. Um, of course, they're saying that if we don't do more to protect the whales, that they will stop importing our seafood products. We can't take that chance. That's one of the reasons why we're doing this. Ultimately, it's about protecting the whales, but we also have to make sure we protect our, our resource and our economy as well. How, how much are these changes costing the government and, and affecting fishermen as well? Because you're trying to have that balance as well. So we've We've been working very closely with fishers, uh, with industry. We just recently had the Gear Summit in Halifax, uh, the Innovation Summit, and it, it's it, it's actually quite interesting because a lot of the measures that we're we're looking at and a lot of the gear changes that we're looking at are actually things that are coming directly from fishermen. Mm -hmm. um, they're actually the ones who are developing the processes that they want to see in place. So we're working collaboratively with them. Um, we're actually also funding pilot projects in certain areas through the Atlantic Fisheries Fund and the Quebec Fisheries Fund. So we're looking at different ways to making sure that we mitigate those uh, those those costs as much as we can. Uh, you were also allowing an earlier start the snow crab fishing season, something fishermen in northern New Brunswick uh, were asking for, uh, but you would need to send an icebreaker in. Uh, how much is that going to cost? Will the government be providing that? We've actually just... Uh, um, we actually have just signed the contract with a third provider for ice breaking. It's something that we heard um, a lot from the fishers in the in uh, northern New Brunswick that they had to make sure that they were able to get out at the same time as everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, the, the third party icebreaker was extremely important to us in making sure that these measures are successful because the sooner people can go out, the sooner they can get back in and then their gear is out of the water. And that's one of the big things is making sure that if, if there's nobody in the area, then the whales have safe passage. Uh, there will be new speed limits for ships in, in vast areas of northeastern New Brunswick and southeast of Anticosti Island. Uh, why new speed limits there? We know that some of the whales are actually um, being harmed because of vessel strikes and slowing down and, and going through these critical areas is, is, is imperative. That's why those measures were uh, announced today by Minister Garneau, who's um, the Transportation Minister. We know that it's it's uh, something that um, we want to see happen. They're reducing it to 10 knots in certain areas, and in some areas even as low as 8 knots if, if, they're, if they have to go through it. Mm -hmm. um, but we're looking at other measures as well in terms of uh, making sure that we're, we're addressing all of the concerns that we're hearing about in terms of vessel strikes and entanglements. Uh, those who study North Atlantic right whales say to increase their population, not only do we have to focus on preventing deaths, but increasing birth rates that's also an issue what is the federal government doing to help north atlantic right whales when it comes to reproduction or help those who are researching this issue well i think that one of the things that we have to remember is it's a, it's that the, the whales themselves are are not easy to predict where they're going to be uh what we have to do as a government is make sure that we're doing everything we possibly can so that they've they've got safe passage they're now changing uh migration routes i it's it's probably in search of food. That's what the um, you know the science is showing us that they're changing where they've always been, uh, and so we have to make sure that we're we're addressing the issues of them traveling across these areas, making sure that they have they're they're um, they're protected when they're in the areas, and we're also supporting the science around what is happening with the whale populations. Will you reflect on the effectiveness of these new rules later on in the year? Absolutely. This is an evolving conversation. You know, this is something that's been going on since 2017. Um, you know, we're, we always take what we learn from the year and, and determine how we best go forward, what worked, what didn't. Um, we want to make sure that we're doing everything possible, but we are really confident that this year these measures are going to make a huge difference. All right. We'll wait and see. Minister, we appreciate your time tonight. Thanks for having me. Fisheries Minister